Hi guys, uh, here's a commercial bottle of beer. My channel is about home brewing, but uh, every now and again I get inspired by commercial beer to brew something. I'm not uh, much of a lager drinker, but uh, there is one style of lager that I actually uh, do like, and that's the Keller beer. With that said, a Keller beer doesn't have to be a bottom fermented beer, aka a lager beer. Uh, it can be a uh, top fermented ale as well. Uh, this is a standard Keller beer, Koblenzer, which I bought at the Swedish uh, store Systembolaget. And this is a very nice beer, I think. Um, and a Keller beer is an uh, unfiltered beer, so it should be unfiltered and unpasteurized. And unfiltered and unpasteurized means that it can be some yeast that we can harvest in there. Um, if you follow my channel, you know I'm a yeast geek, yeast nerd. So, I wanted to try this. Can we brew a batch of beer with uh, yeast harvested and grown up from uh, the Koblenzer uh, Keller beer bottle? And uh, let's put this one into a glass. Uh, we can taste the beer and then we uh, can see if we can brew something with it. So, unfiltered, unpasteurized, and maybe that's why I like it. Uh, it has a light yellow lemony color to it. It's hazy, it's beautiful, two finger head. It's a tight, foamy white head. Looks awesome, inviting, and there's a lot of floaters in there. Um, I don't think they are bottle conditioned, but I don't have a clue actually. There aren't any sediment in the bottle or in any of the bottles I have tried, uh, but they are always hazy and uh, have some floaters, at least in this one. Okay, let's give it a nose. <sighs> Bread. Uh, fruity, um, citrusy, uh, lemon. <sighs> Not your uh, lager, apple taste, no sulfur or something like that. <sighs> Smells fresh, inviting. I said <sighs> fruity, lemon fruit. Malty, sweet, a um, little tartness, lemons again. Yeah, uh, this is a really nice beer, and um, it's a mass-produced German beer, uh, brewed according to the German uh, purity laws. Which means it can only contain water, malt, hops, and yeast after the changes in that law. I wanted to do a video about the German beer laws, but uh, not today. The Reinheitsgebot. The German purity laws, maybe it's better called. Uh, okay, so um, I have already brewed a beer with this yeast. So um, why don't you have a look at the brew footage and then as usual we will come back 
and uh, taste the beer. Before, I want to say something before we have a look at the uh, video. I wasn't trying to clone this beer. I was only trying to use the yeast and see if uh, it was the yeast part that I do like with the at least Koblenzer Keller beer. Uh, Keller beer, unpasteurized, unfiltered, that must be a great beer for us home brewers to brew if we want to brew a good tasty lager. Much more nutrition. It's a living, breathing beer. So, okay, with that said, oh, one more thing before we go. I actually uh, emailed the, the brewery if they have any suggestions uh, on uh, a recipe for this beer or if they have any suggestions what yeast that I would use if I wanted to brew something like this. They didn't reply, sadly. Uh, so, if you don't reply, I will steal your yeast. Okay, bring on the video. Cheers, guys. Okay, 20 grams of the DME. Let's add two deciliters of water, bring that to a boil. We're up to a boil. Let's put some yeast nutrient in there as well. And we're also going to sanitize the stir bar by boiling. Um, and here's the drags from two bottles of uh, Koblenzer Kelle beer. Natural, fresh and unfiltered lager beer. To my understanding Kelle beer should be uh, unfiltered and unpasteurized. So we hope we can wake this yeast Alive. We hope this will work. The hot wort and the stir bar are in the little cute Emeyer flask. Um, I'm just gonna put this outside to cool down. It's um, over minus 10 celsius outside so it will cool down quite fast and uh, while this comes up to room temperature because this has been sitting in the fridge the wort has cooled down some awesome one-handed filming today as usual Can't some more. Okay. And let's pitch our slurry. It's empty. Okay. Now we're gonna put this on the stir plate and uh, hope it will kick off. Okay, it's on the stir plate. Okay, it's time to step this small one up. Uh, it looks kind of nasty, but I tasted it and it tasted uh, awesome. So I made a bigger starter. This is about just over two and a half liters of wort.
So we're gonna add it all. So I haven't cold crushed this. There's no really need to decant this. So let's add it all and the stir bar. To grow up a good pitch rate for the big batch. Okay. So the big starter is on the stir bar and we're going for the brew of the week. You can see all the little pieces of yeast there. This is three and a half kilo of Pilsner malt, 400 grams of Munich, 200 grams of wheat malt, 200 grams of dextrin malt, and 200 grams of melanogen malt. That's it. One cap of lactic acid. And it's mashing time. We're gonna start this at uh, 65C. back in about 50 minutes and uh, take a pH reading and uh, at that stage I always give it another stir okay let's take a pH reading Cool down the wart. The wart is about 16 degrees. We seem a little bit high, I think. Let's see how much it drops. 5.8, 5.7. So I will be adding some more lactic acid to this. We're almost in the range now. 5.6. We're almost in the zone now. 5.6 yeah uh, let's add another cap of lactic acid okay so another cap goes in and then I knew I should have added some more in the beginning don't know why I didn't trust my gut okay Okay, let's do the second pH reading. It 
to drop a little bit more 5.5 so we're in the zone now might drop down to 5.4 will it go even further down Five point four. Yeah, that's in the Goldilocks zone. So uh, five point three, even. We gave it a little bit more time. Yeah. No worries there. Okay, it's time to get sparching. Okay, it's time to taste the starter. Let me get this poured. Um, I will pour it with uh, the camera off and uh, turn the camera around, okay? Okay guys, it's time to uh, taste the starter. Poured myself a glass here. Smells good. And it tastes good. Well, Mr. Calibi, this is uh, the last time I will use this. Actually, I haven't used the bazooka for quite a while. Thought I'd give it another go. <sighs> Had to pour the wart over not a clear wart because uh, couldn't circulate and now let's pour the wart back and start the boil let's check the pre-boil pre-boil is 10.43 okay Okay, we're up to a boil. I'm gonna start the timer here. Uh, as you see, I had a little boil over. So I was trying to uh, explain to uh, my Norwegian friend Espen how uh, to make his first starter or how to deal with it after he's made it. So, this is Espen's fault was his share that went over okay uh, time has started ain't gonna add anything uh, until uh, 40 minutes left of the boil we're gonna add 22 grams of magnum at 40 we're gonna add uh, 28 grams of sus at 15 and we're gonna add 30 grams of sauce at 2 and also at 15, we're gonna add some protaflock and yeast nutrient. That's it. Okay. 22 grams of magnum going in at 40 minutes. Okay. 50 minutes left. In goes 28 grams of uh, sas hops. Zaz. Also in goes some protaflock and yeast nutrient. And with 30 seconds left, the two minute addition goes in. But I have to run to hook up the cooling water, so I guess things equal out. So the two minute addition became more like 
flame out hops instead. Giving it a one minute blast with the pure oxygen. Okay, it's time to pitch the decant started. Just left some beer there on the yeast to swirl it up with. Try to do this one-handed. It's not that easy to do it one hand uh, on the fermentosaurus, but I uh, <coughs> guess uh, that's just a Bluetooth problem or YouTube problem. It went fine this time. That's always. We have 25 liters of wort. But that's with the ball closed. So let's open the ball. <coughs> now we're just over 24.3 or something like that. Smells good. Okay. Okay. The beer is in the fridge. Uh, insulated the thermometer. Had a little leak. There was some uh, pressure coming out. But uh, just tightening this solved the problem. And I pushed. Some more pressure on it, so now we have two bars. Uh, let's put the sanitized spanning valve on there. Okay, so the spanning valve didn't like that amount of pressure. Let's try another one. See how that works. Okay, so yet again, pushed the pressure back up to two bar. Almost there now. You can still hear some gas going in. I'm gonna try this one instead and see if. Yeah, that's two bars. Okay. Let's hook up this one instead. I don't trust the meters at all on these spanning valves. This shows one and a half bar. It's more in there always. What that reads. Okay, but it's holding pressure. So we have two bars of pressure on the uh, lager yeast. I still, uh, I think it's a lager yeast. It said lager on the bottle. So uh, and. Uh, the Germans are quite picky with the beers, so I think it's a log yeast. And we're sitting at 14.6, 14.7 degrees now. And I have the heating turned off. The fridge are set for 15 degrees Celsius. So let's try to brew a Keller beer at 15 degrees Celsius under two bars of pressure and there's a lot of troop in there but there's no problem we'll settle out twenty five liters this is tilted a bit so we're not at twenty five just a little bit over twenty four twenty four point three or something like that Okay, that's the brew day. I have to clean up now. Cheers, guys. 36 hours in. And we have Krausen and good amount of pressure in there. We have movement. So, looking good.
we're still at 15 so transferring the Keller beer to the keg Okay, so you saw the brew footage. I also have the recipe here so we can run down the numbers. But first, let's uh, pour a beer. I do have the beer here in the kegerator. Uh, so we're gonna see if we have any left. Forced, forced. First pour of the day, so I poured Tad out. Okay, maybe over pour there. Okay, so here you have my beer. Um, and as I said, it's not going to be a clone of this one. I never intended that. So it's yellow. It's a little bit hazy. Not as this one. My beers tend to clear up whatever I do. Um, didn't use any findings in this one I think. Well I used protaflock but I didn't do any gelatins or something like that. Um, so this one has cleared up, it has been in the keg now for, um, I don't know, let's see if we have a brew date in here. Um, yeah, I think it has been kegged for about at least a month. So it has cleared up a bit, it was more, more hazier first. Uh, so we have a quite clear beer now. Uh, don't really know how they do it because um, I do think um, often when you when we read uh, that store-bought beers are unfiltered they're always super hazy and there can be a lot of uh, like true been there. Uh, I have never filtered a beer and my beer always clear out if they aren't like super super hoppy. Super hoppy super super dry hopped hoppy. So this is uh, almost crystal clear now. Just a little bit of haze left. Let's give it a nose. Sweet. Malty. Some uh, almost like a biscuit. When it was younger, it had more of a, that uh, citrusy uh, flavor on it, like this beer has. Okay, let's dive in. Yeah, um, it's a clean brew. It has some malt biscuits on it with a light citrus a very good mouthfeel to this one um, this beer turned out very very good I think uh, they are not 
the same beer, they are not close by any means. This is more hoppy, more bitter, more yeasty, and this is more malty, more smooth, more clean. And uh, much, much of a bigger beer. Great mouthfeel. Um, this beer did ferment to 1012 from 1047, which gave it an alcohol level by 4.6%. This is 4.8%. Uh, Keller beers are often 4.8%, and that will vary a bit, of course, but 4.8 is uh, quite often. Can be lower, can be higher, of course. Yeah, I mashed in when at I first about 65 thought about doing this beer for I actually thought 75 minutes. Just use pills the malt and some wheat malt, and that's it. And uh, some noble hops, and I had sauce hops, so uh, I went with that. I like the sauce hop. Uh, but as usual, on brew day, I do my uh, recipe on brew day morning. I decide what yeast to use, make a starter. Often I brew on Sunday, so I make a starter on Wednesday, so I can write it out in a good way. Um, and uh, cold crash the starter and decant and all that. If you haven't seen uh, my starter video, I'll put a link to that one below. Why you should uh, at least take like three days to do a starter. I, I take four days often, but three days are mostly fine. But why not be sure and plan ahead. And uh, on, on brew day I actually decide what to brew and make a recipe. And then I plan my recipe out and then I go down to the brew shed and pull out my grains. I have a lot of different grains so I can play with. And I almost every time change everything up uh, on the fly because I, I want to add a little bit of that and ooh, a little bit of that. I have uh, then I have to go up again after the machine and calculate all things together, what I have actually done. So, uh, the grain bill got a little bit more complex than I was intended to. Um, I used 3.5 kilos of Pilsner, um, 400 grams of Munich, 200 grams of uh, Carapils. 200 grams of melanodium malt and 200 grams of wheat malt. I used 22 and a half grams of magnum at 40. I used 30 grams of sas at 15 and I used 28 and a half gram of sas at flame out. That's it and I fermented it with the Yeast that I've grown up from the Koblenzer bottles, which I call now my Kellerby yeast. And um, I've actually used that yeast now or three times. I have another one here with the same yeast. Uh, we won't talk about that uh, today. I did a mash out. 10 minutes. I fermented this, started fermented this at 15 degrees Celsius in the fermentosaurus with two bars of pressure. And um, after a couple of days, I started ramping the temperature up. I think I ended up with as high as 24 degrees Celsius. But this beer turned out great, so. Let's see if we can 
find any flaws with it if we want to try it again. I do want to try it again. It is a little bit sweet, not not super super sweet, something like that. But I'm trying to pick this beer apart. If I wanted to change something, um, but I do actually like that. It give that uh, mouth feel like um, you know you get when you uh, drink your high a. High, a higher ABV beer, like a uh, almost British, like an uh, foolish ESB, not as much, but it pushing it a little bit in that direction. But if we wanted to make it a dry beer, maybe we just should have gone with, as I said, uh, only peels the malt like. 10% wheat or something like that. But I actually do like this beer. So this experiment was a success. Uh, I'm really happy with the outcome. And before I sign out, because I don't think I have so much more to say about this yeast, I want to show you something cool. Um, because we're still experimenting with the fermentosaurus. After filling my keg up, and I actually, I did take a few samples while cold crashing, and that's a, such a cool thing to do, uh, to be able to do, to um, pour a cold carbonated beer from the fermenter. That's awesome. But after filling the keg up, I had some beers left. Um, what to do with it? I know some people, after filling up the keg, they bottle uh, the rest and put uh, sugar drops in there, something like that, and uh, let them f uh, second ferment in the bottle. But from the fermenter source, we already have carbonated beer straight out of the fermenter. So, uh, we could actually bottle carbonated beer straight out the fermenter, and that's awesome. Um, so I actually just fill up two PET bottles with the uh, carbonation cap and a long hose purged out the air with CO2 and uh, fill them up and it's very, very firm. So that's so very easy. The only problem is if I open this, I have to drink it quite fast. So I have to bring this to someone and share it with. But it's super easy. You could do it with smaller bottles as well, but it was so easy just to, Take down two empty uh, pet bottles. So that's an other awesome uh, side uh, effect, no, side feature for the fermentosaurus. It's a real cool fermenter that you can do very fun stuff with. This is a great beer. They're two entirely different beers, so uh, let's not compare them anymore. But cheers guys, hope you enjoyed the video, hope uh, you will try this experiment at home, because uh, it's really funny to steal yeast, F funny, that's a, uh, it's a Swedish problem I have with that word. It's a great experiment, stealing yeast and ferment your own with it. Just ramp it up so you get enough yeast cells. Okay, so cheers guys, that's it. Um, 
Thanks for watching as usual. Dr. Hans out. <sighs> Maybe we should do both because we're double fisted today. So cheers guys. Dr. Hans out.